And I'm going to start telling you what autoimmunity actually is before we talk about the causes of it. Okay, immunity, let's start there. Immunity works like this. A bad guy comes, a cold virus, a bacteria, and our body fights it off. And when it fights it off, it does this really cool thing. It creates an antibody. An antibody is a memory cell. It memorizes the enemy it just saw so that it knows the next time it sees that enemy, the antibody is ready and can fight it off that much quicker. I know we are all very used to the word antibody these days, but I want to make sure you understand that it's a memory cell. It's your body's awesome way of memorizing the enemy it just saw and won so that the next time it sees it, it can attack it right away. So become very efficient at attacking it, which is why the second time we see that same bad guy, we fight it off that much faster. For autoimmunity though, the body creates antibodies against its own tissues, against its own self, right? That's not good. That's an overactive immune system. We don't want to attack ourselves. Imagine if we actually knew why the immune system was triggered in the first place. Well, guess what? We do. We know why the immune system was triggered in the first place. The answer is simple. Inflammation. Inflammation will cause a cascade that will lead not only to autoimmune diseases, but to disease in general. But today we're talking about autoimmune diseases. Inflammation. So what are the five main causes of inflammation? That's what we're going to talk about today. Of course, there's more than five, but we're going to talk about five main triggers that cause inflammation in the body and that cause autoimmune issues in the body. The first one, of course, I'm sorry to everyone, it's diet. The standard American diet. The acronym is SAD. If you're eating American standard American diet, you're eating a SAD diet. I'm sorry, there's just no way around it. The high sugar, the fructose, the alcohol, the artificial sweeteners, these are toxic. Not only do they cause insulin resistance, fatty liver, heart disease, all the things you know about, but they also cause something called leaky gut. And if you didn't watch my video on leaky gut yet, you should, because it's awesome. And then when you have that leaky gut, you have this inflammatory cascade towards autoimmune disease. And so of course, all these inflammatory toxin foods are going to cause autoimmune diseases. The next one, is toxins, heavy metals, molds, pesticides, chemicals, toxins. They can be found in so many places, in the air we breathe, in the water we drink, in the food that we eat, but they can also be found in our skincare products, our household cleaners, they're found everywhere. And when our bodies are exposed to it over time, they start to attack our cells. Now remember, autoimmune disease takes time until we get diagnosed. So you could have been exposed to something 10 years ago, the damage already cooking in your body, and you only get diagnosed 10 years later. So part of figuring out your trigger is getting a very detailed history. So whoever you work with should be asking you questions for way back. If they're not asking you questions that go years back, you're probably in the wrong place. Allergens. Allergens is another trigger for autoimmunity. One of the classic ones is an allergy to gluten. The protein in gluten called gelatin is a protein that is very similar to a thyroid protein. So if you're allergic to gluten, your body will create an antibody to gluten, but at the same time, it's creating an antibody to your thyroid. So for those people with allergies to gluten, every time they eat it, they're actually attacking their thyroid. And one of the first things we have to do for our patients with Hashimoto's hypothyroidism, if you know it, you know what I'm talking about then we have to remove the gluten. And there's other links. We know that there's links between allergic responses and autoimmune responses. There's a lot of studies out there now. And there's a push now to identify which foods are triggering which autoimmunity. But what you need to know for now is that allergies and autoimmunity are linked. And then there's microbes. Microbes is something we are all familiar with in this day and age. We're talking about um, Lyme and other tick-borne disease, Epstein-Barr viruses and other viruses. I don't know why I just said viruses, but viruses is what I meant to say. And when we have a, some sort of reaction, it can, some sort of infection, viral or a bacterial or a parasite, that moment can trigger again, a whole autoimmune response. And sometimes even though we've cleared the virus or treated the bacteria, 
we're still left with the autoimmune disease that this infection triggered. And that's a big deal. And then, of course, there's stress. Don't roll your eyes. I know we all have stress, but stress is a big deal. And so when we look at autoimmune issues, about 50% of autoimmune patients, we say, um, why did it happen? And it's attributed to an unknown trigger factor. Well, we know that that unknown trigger factor is psychological or physical stress. And how do we know? Because when we interview our autoimmune patients, about 80% of them will say something like this. Ever since this happened, I have not been the same. Ever since I had an accident, ever since the divorce, ever since so-and-so died, I have not been the same. That's important. That means that stress in their life triggered the autoimmune cascade. We can't roll our eyes to that. It's a really important thing we have to pay attention to. And in fact, we always ask our patients for a timeline from birth until now so we could see if we could figure out that life event because sometimes it's not clear even to the patient. So, okay, I scared you enough. You know, I always scare you, but then I always try to give you solutions. So how do we treat it? What do I do? And here's what's interesting. For many conventional providers, the conversation of lifestyle modification is like a soft recommendation. Yeah, you should change your food, but here's some medicine. Like, yeah, you should change your diet, but this medication is what you need. And you know I'm not against that, uh, medication, but you also know that I think the lifestyle modification is the key. It's the first thing that we need to do. So even if you don't want to work with us and you don't have a functional med medicine provider at your disposal, there are still things that you can do to make a difference in your autoimmune disease, in any disease that you have, quite honestly. So the first thing you do is you clean up your diet. Get rid of the standard American diet. Start putting in whole foods, no more processed foods. Put in the good stuff. Take out the bad stuff. Try to sleep for eight hours. You know I have a video on sleep. Try to sleep. Remove some of the stressors. I know it can't be zero stress, but remove the ones that you can. And you'll be amazed how amazing you feel just by those changes. So just by implementing those changes, you can already start reversing some of the inflammation that causes autoimmune issues. But I also wanna tell you about a favorite supplement of mine. I like to tell you guys a little bit about supplements. A supplement that is very good for autoimmune patients is omega-3. It is really critical and that is part of your lifestyle. But as always, as you know in my fatty liver video. If you didn't watch it, you should go watch it. Don't take supplements if you didn't clean up your diet because it's going to be too much for your liver. So when I say supplements, I mean part of this complete breakfast. It means when you make your diet change, add the supplements to it.